Good morning and welcome to part three of Real Estate Economics weekly webinar series. This particular week we're covering the Arizona market area. Uh, this is the third part of three, so if you're trying to catch the whole series, please make sure that you um, download parts one and parts two. In part one we prevented a little si uh, history. In part two we went into uh, some of the five-year forecasts and now we're going to discuss our Arizona housing market model that we hope will help you in your business decisions to enter the market here, be part of the market here, or just address your interest in the residential housing market in this particular area. As we mentioned in uh, section two, the supply of housing tends to grow fairly slowly. You can see that in the blue line here. It's a fairly steady rise with a noticeable plateau in the most recent time period, the result of this market disruption. By comparison, the uh, jagged green line is the demand for housing. That is really driven by employment. So what we get is wide oscillations in the demand for housing driven entirely or almost entirely by the employment picture. When employment is weak as it is in the 92 period, demand is, is less than housing. In essence, the employment base is too small for the housing stock and housing tends to decline in price. Then when the economy improves as it did into January of the year 2000, the only place for that demand to outlet itself is into higher prices. So prices tend to rise since the supply is, is generally unable to rise. Uh, you can see in the bubble period of 2006 and 2007, the demand for housing rose quite rapidly. People were able to get subprime loans that were not at all connected to their ability to pay. The only outlet for that is into higher prices, and so you know, prices ramp up quite quickly, and supply is unable to do so. Then in 2008, the 2009 2010 period, you've seen the recession drive those jobs down, drive the employment, unemployment rate much higher, uh, shrink the um, uh, ability to find and keep a job and so uh, the demand for housing shrinks quite rapidly uh, but the supply you know is is plateauing or growing at a very slow level don't forget there's always some units leaving the supply there's always a leakage of units into other uses and into uh, you know the get very old burn down in limited numbers you know just different things takes takes homes out of the supply if you can see here the difference in the forecast period between the green line and the blue line that's essentially um, undervaluation. The demand is less than the supply and that's going to lead to uh, undervaluation for homes as we'll address here. Again in the blue you have the historic forecast and forecast in the forecast period me median home price the green is the supportable median home price and that supportable price is driven by local wages, local incomes and interest rates during each particular time period. So you can see the big spike in the subprime period when there was really no correlation between supportable price and the size of loans that people could um, get often without even any documentation. Then as the recession takes hold uh, the median home price comes way down, it's overcorrected significantly, and this big gap between the blue line and between the green line is historical undervaluation. If you look back over 20 years, there's never a period where these lines are this widely separated. Much of that is a function of confidence, uh, employment losses, and this sort of thing. Uh, you can see right about January 2009 a sudden spike up in the supportable median home price. That's when the rates went from six to five as we talked to in an earlier slide. Uh, suddenly the income levels in this particular area could support a much larger home payment and that's what drives that number up. If you look at the green line over the for forecast period it you know bounces around a little bit but it's generally not trending much higher. And This is higher interest rates taking their hold uh, employment and income, at least uh, household income, tends to grow fairly slowly. We're a little bit concerned at this point in time about disposable income with taxes rising rapidly as they appear poised to do. 
but household income hasn't grown that fast over the last few years and so ultimately the um, these two lines are going to sync up in a condition of much greater um, equilibrium and really come back into line but it's going to take years and until then there's tremendous bargains to be had these are the price trends for this particular market area as you can see the prices rose very rapidly from the 140, 150, 130 range in 2003, 2002, that time period, all the way to 266,000, only to come crashing back to earth in 2009 at 137. We see a little bit of appreciation, as we've uh, mentioned in previous slides, over the forecast period, uh, coming back up to about 175 by 2014. That's really a 10-year period from uh, 2004 when it was 171 to 2014 when it's uh, 176, 050. So this is a, a gradual uh, recovery that's taking place as we begin to pick up a few jobs and the economy uh, shows some signs of, of, of improvement. Here's the year-over-year uh, changes in price. You can see these huge numbers right here in the 2005 time period, 45.3% on an annual basis. If we picked up 16 or 17, 18% in 2003 and 2004 together, then we'd get 45 more percent and another uh, 7%. You can see how the prices went from 130 to 260 in just a period of three or four years. Now we're getting the payback for that, obviously um, quick reversal on uh, appreciation and now several years of, of very difficult uh, uh, crushing price degradation. By 2010, so over the period of this current year, we're going, going to get a little bit of reversion towards the mean in terms of appreciation, so we've got some you know, modest appreciation over 2010, 2011 just the uh, seriousness of the decline is going to you know, let those prices come up a little bit as people begin to find jobs and employment um, begins to steady itself. Also, uh, as we mentioned earlier, we're believing we're going to get an in-migration of mature buyers into this market as they flee many of the other uh, high-tech states and higher cost-of-living states. Uh, we see those buyers selling equity or selling uh, their homes and taking equity, lots of it in some cases, from those markets, coming to Arizona, putting a relatively small amount of that into uh, comfortable living accommodations and putting in the rest of it into the bank or into investments for their retirement years. This is our residential um, opportunity risk report. If you see how this is structured, we we take housing demand, which we've talked to earlier, very much job-based, compare that to housing to supply, and derive an overbuilt or underbuilt condition. If you recall, this overbuilt condition is largely a function of employment. Then we um, take median household income and the rates, and we calculate whether or not the market is over or undervalued. So if you look to 2010, the market is overbuilt, again, because the job base is far too small for the housing supply but it's significantly undervalued as we presented in previous slides. This condition peaked in 2009, the maximum undervaluation and will become increasingly less undervalued over the forecast period. On the far right hand side of the column we project market health in 24 months, so if we look to 2008 we have a stable condition developing on the ground during the course of 2010 as this over um, as this undervaluation becomes recognized and people who have uh, stable employment uh, prospects uh, see this undervaluation and gradually move into this housing market. We face a couple of strong years coming up predicated on the economy giving us a few jobs and rebounding somewhat before stability is, is finally starts to reemerge uh, later in the forecast period. That's part three of our four-part series. Real Estate Economics Weekly Webinar Series uh, presenting Arizona today.